it's challenging choice to speak about the work of a PhD student that I'm co-supervising with Sophie Panchina, but I would like to start with some warnings. It's clearly, I'm not in my comfort zone. So I will speak about uh, something I'm not familiar at all. I'm absolutely not an expert in attack tree neither in cybersecurity. I have a master in math and my knowledge in theoretical computer science is partial. And you will see during the talk that it's even more partial than what you could expect. <laughs> and the goal of the talk is just to, tell, to tell my own story about that. And if you are interested in the subject, I will have two suggestions for you. First, you could have a look to this uh, survey paper by uh, Sophie and co-author. And in this highlight this year, Sophie will give a more complete, more detailed survey talks about attack tree. And so just go and see it. It will be wonderful. So I'm really grateful to Sophie Panchina and Alexandre Terefenko with our PhD students who are really the one who learned me everything I know about attack tree. So everything nice I could say, it's due to them and everything stupid is just my own responsibility. So let's start. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, we'll, we'll go with a, a kind of toy example and we say that we want to rob the casino and we will first think in, in the old time where stuff were quite simple, you enter the casino, you take the money, and that was done. So we, we're coming with, you know, more complex technology. And, you know, I've made some drawing effort for, for, for the occasion. And I'm looking at, I mean, a not really more sophisticated situation, but that will be our, our toy driving example. You imagine a robber who wants to open the safe. What he, he will do, he will enter the casino. He will then deactivate the camera and then start opening the safe and take the money and leave. Okay? And you can imagine, and Hollywood did it for us, very more complicated way to rob a casino. So I have to admit that I haven't look at Ocean 11, 12, or 13 for a long time. But I remember that it was really tricky to, to get the, the casino robbed. At some point, they used an electromagnetic bomb to make that uh, power shut down. They put an acrobat into a box and so on. And so it was really, really complicated. And so the question is, if you want to prevent to such complex attacks, and not especially the ones that are driven in Hollywood, how would you do? And the question of cybersecurity and how to model threat was, um, I mean, in the ask from people for already, uh, I mean, uh, decades. And if you Google attack tree on, on, on the internet, the very first paper that you see comes from the Dr. Dub journals in 1999. And I wouldn't call that this a scientific journal. It was rather a magazine that computer programmers were looking at. And there is a paper by Bruce Schneier was saying, few people truly understand computer security. And in truth, unbreakable security is broken all the time. And then he advocated the way of modeling stuff. And you say what we need is a model for uh, computer security. And that was, from my knowledge, the first time that attack tree were introduced. And it, it, it gives some basic idea to say that the attack tree's goal is to describe an attack whose root is the attack. And then it's decomposed in sub root, sub objective of the attackers. And if you, you read the, the, the articles, it's quite nicely done. You, you actually see attack tree, where here there is an attack tree for opening a safe and different possibility to do it. And it describes also kind of qualitative analysis, quantitative analysis. But there is nothing, from my point of view, really formal in, in this uh, magazine paper. But it concludes that attack tree provides a formal methodology for analyzing the security of system and subsystems. And since 1999, 
uh, the, that would be the whole. So the question is, what's the semantic of the tree? That would be the goal of the whole talks, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Why is it a tree when I attack? Uh, why did they decide to make it a tree? I don't know because it's a, a an tree from a safety analysis. No, no, but why is it a tree? I mean, why are there no loops? Because when I attack a bank, it's always a... <laughs> it just unravels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plan and plan and plan. Plan and plan <laughs> again. And so since 1999, attack tree have been advocated for the evaluation of threats in risk by, I mean, serious association including NATO in 2008 and the Open Web Application Security Project in 2013. And so this has also attracted the interest of academic in different directions, and I just list three of them. The first one, and this answering your question, to provide a rigorous semantics for attack tree. Other is for semi-automatic generation of attack tree. And the third one is algorithm for quantitative analysis of attack tree. And during this talk, my focus will really be on the first point, which is rigorous semantics for attack tree. Okay, so I've tried to make a more formal attack tree of my tall example, which is, uh, let's rob the, the casino. And it's decomposed this way. I'm not giving the semantic yet. and the question is, what does it mean? And that's really what will follow us during the whole talk. And we start with first formal definition for attack tree. And we'll first start before going to the semantics with the syntax. And the syntax I will choose, I will fix a set of proposition. And what I will call an attack tree is either a Boolean formula phi over the proposition that I fixed at the beginning, or something made of one of those two operator, which is an OR node or an AND node, and below we have a tech tree. Okay? So to make this a bit more formal, I will just rephrase these sentences by the proposition where D is to the door, I'm on the rubber is going through the door. W is the rubber is going to the window. C is for the rubber deactivate the camera. And S is for the rubber is opening the safe. Okay. Here there is already something that I would like to point. Even if I haven't given the semantic yet, we believe that an uh, end operator is something symmetric. You know, if you say, P and Q, you expect it will be the same semantic than Q and P, okay? Otherwise, you wouldn't call that an end operator. On the other hand, if I think to my naive toy example, you clearly understand that if you deactivate the camera before or after opening the safe, it wouldn't have the same effect. And that's what I call the difference between what is known as a static semantic and a dynamic semantic. And my focus, even if I will say from time to time a word about the static semantic, will be rather on the dynamic one, which is the one I illustrate on my toy example. So if I want to do stuff with this dynamic semantic, I need to add an operator that I not Sn for sequential n, and I add this new pictogram where this arrow to say, okay, this is the sequential end. Note I've done this. I can give the attack tree for the, for the toy example, and it's sequential end of, I enter either through the door or the windows, then I deactivate the camera, and then I open the screen. And now we come to the really difficult point is, we'll try to give a semantics. And we will give a, a semantic on traces, which will be rich ability oriented. So given our set of proposition, I, I denote sigma, the set of subset of the proposition. And what we call in this talk a trace, it will be a finite word over sigma. So if I take again my example of uh, 
the casino, I add, for instance, another uh, proposition, which is M for the robber is wearing his mask. We have a, an example of trace is the robber is wearing his mask. He's keep wearing his mask going through the window. Keep green wearing this mask while he's deactivating the camera. Then he remove his mask, he's opening the safe, and then he go through the door. Okay, so now I'm providing one trace semantics, which is origin from one paper of Sophie that I will give you the citation later. So the semantic for a leaf is the set of trace which ends in a, a letter who satisfies the leaf, okay? The or is naturally the disjunction, the scent is naturally the concatenation, and I would say the less natural semantics, but which makes sense, is the end, which is defined through this um, merge operator, which is either I want to see the objective of the first attack tree and then the one of the second one, or the other way around. Phi is an um, atomic proposition on on the, the set of propositions that I fixed before. In in this okay, um so the question is is in some sense the N nothing then Reput all the potential order of the ends. Did I understand the, the question correctly? At this stage, yes, but then I will do some more stuff and it wouldn't be the case anymore. But the intuition at this stage is correct. And even at this stage, if L1 and L2 uh, have no empty intersection, you could satisfy T1 uh, and T2 at the last step. You could satisfy yeah. both at the last step. step. Well, with and with uh, sand, you, you can yes. okay. don't allow this. Uh, 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 th there are different variants. Yes. I mean, but I, I mean, there is a another deeper problem later. Uh, I, okay. See, I come back to to my to my example. Uh, the same for the rubber. So, if you look at the semantic for each of the leaf, it just means. What I denote by AD or AW, AC or AS, it's just a position where S is satisfied. So the semantic of D is just, there is a finite words, finite trace, and I'm ending by seeing D. And then I look at the semantics of the whole attack tree. It's say, at some point, either I go through the door or the windows, then I deactivate the camera, and then I open the safe. I mean, nothing surprised. If you try, I mean, I was guided by Sophie to see, let's go and look at some place a semantics that you will understand, because this stuff was quite uncomfortable for me as a mathematician. Most of the time, I start with the definition. Here we start with concepts from this journal that were rather abstract through, really interesting. And if you look at the paper, every paper you open, you have the impression you discover a new semantics. And they are not always that easily compared. What I do here, you can really see it as a parenthesis. I will just point you some spot where what kind of stuff people have done, but it won't be necessary for the rest of the talk. It's just to give you an overview of some other stuff that are done. So people are looking also at attack tree really in the static way. And here it's just, I would say, roughly speaking, proposition, proposition oh, and or tree, okay? <laughs> It's a logic of proposition. There, a, um, a leaf is either true or false, and you interpret the end as an end, the or as the or, and in particular, the set of, attack tr of attacks in the tree is finite, okay? So there are semantics which are really close in some sense to the one we are looking, in the sense that there are dynamics also, but the main dif difference 
it in the action. I mean, the way that we give the semantics to the only. In our case, we look at finite words ending with some action. In other semantic, it's just the action. And the trace on action will be something like that. So it's really similar to us. But since we have started with only finitely many interpretation of leaf, the main difference is that the sec of attack is finite in this case. And even if it's not the topic of the talk, just to give you an idea of what can people do when they are looking to quantitative semantics, they, we can put numbers associated with each leaf. And in the example I give you here, you imagine is the time you have uh, estimated for the action to be performed. And then you interpret in some ring, and I've given there some different ring that you could expect, how the different, uh, the different operator have to calculate to, to aggregate this value. So in this minimal time sequence, you say that the R is the minimal and the N is the addition. And the kind of stuff that we are doing there is you are given a quantitative attack tree and you would like to compute what's the shortest value of the attack or the maximal damage and so on. And so there is, if you're interested in, in there, there is a very nice survey by Bude and Stolinga in 2021 for that. So if we back now to all semantics, I mean, the one I already discussed with you, which the, the semantic of the leaf are finite words ending with a reachability objective. We have the trace we have discussed. Here, the main difference is that the set of attack for a given tree is infinite. Okay. And sorry, here is the reference I told you before where this semantics is infinite. So what kind of question we, I would say, uh, people like informal methods are interesting in? They are, the, I would say, the natural one. The first one is the membership problem. You're taking a trace, you're taking an attack tree, and you are wondering whether this trace is yes or no in the semantic of the tree. Another natural question is you're just taking a tree and you are wondering whether yes or no, the set of attack is empty. And the third problem, which is also natural, you are given two trees and you are wondering whether they are equivalent, namely if they denote the same languages. Okay, this is just an example, a very simple one of two uh, equivalent attack tree there where we replace this OR node by putting the OR in the form. And so what are complexity for those problems in this semantic? So the membership is polynomial, non-empty net is NP complete, and um, equivalence is co-NP complete. And so what's the the key ingredient for the emptiness, and that will be our, I mean, our, our, cat, our quest during the whole talk, is to have some kind of small, what we call small model property. In order to check non-emptiness, we are happy if we know that we can only check for small traces. And we have a theorem saying, okay, if you have an attack tree, if it's not empty, there is a, a small trace in the sense that the trace is not bigger than the size of the tree. And so I just repeat what I told you before, that it's not completely trivial, as the semantic is infinite. OK. We have also done step a, a bit further, where when you look at the attack tree, I mean, it describes some kind of high level understanding of the attack. But in some particular case, you have a precise description of your systems that could be given by a transition system. And you would like to see whether when you synchronize both the attack tree and the system, and then you can ask the same question. And again, in this specific semantic, this has not really an impact on the complexity of the study problem. And just give you an idea on, on our example, we keep this attack tree and you can imagine that this is a simple system, which had the rubber from out can go through the door, through the window, then he's in, he can do the camera or the safe in the order he wants and so on. Okay, we'll 
go back to robbing the casino again, that, let's say that that was the part of the story before I entered the collaboration with Sophie. And my role was to, in some sense, introducing games within the pictures. And if we are in the old time, how could we have a countermeasure for, uh, you know, preventing to rob the casino? You just call look a look and everything was solved. In, the, in my toy example, the idea could be that you would like to hire a guard in order to prevent any robber to enter the system. And in the Hollywood, it's just impossible. They are too good and their scenario are too complex. So we'll forget about that. So no, that was really the start of the PhD thesis of Alexandre. And we were wondering, how can we model the opponent? How can we model? The, um, when I mean opponent, is opponent of the attacker, so the good guy. So. And we face two different possibilities. The first one, which is already present in the literature, is by changing the syntax. That means within the attack tree, we will put node that will represent the node of the opponent and reach what's called the attack's defense tree. And the other way, and we have explored both directions, is by changing the semantics, saying we look, we keep the syntax of an attack tree, but we do not interpret it on a transition system anymore, but on a game arena. And so traces will become strategies, finite words will become finite trees, and transition system will become game arena. And I will start with the, by changing the syntax, okay? So if you go in the literature, you see death picture of this kind, where this means, okay, that's a countermeasure for the Robert Winter, we hire a security guard. A game send question, what does it mean? And if you look to the literature, in fact, it seems that it has only been explored in the static case. And in the static case, it doesn't seem that countermeasure was that important regarding expressivity or complexity. This, I say, a paper of uh, 2011 who said that for every semantics in, in some kind of rank they looked, the computational complexity of the attack tree model and the attack defense tree model is the same. And so now we say, let's look at what's happened in the dynamic case. And so what we, we have proposed, first we've added a leaf which is epsilon, which is no impact, but will be important in, in, the, in the future. But if we have added before, it will have no impact of the problem study and on the complexity. But most importantly, we've added this countermeasure node whose semantics, which is denoted that way, and whose semantic is say, I look all the trace satisfied by T1 to one minus the trace satisfied by two two. Okay. And so I come back to my toy example. I add this countermeasure saying that I hire a guard. And now what happens is that before entering the building, I had to go through the door to the window, but without being seen by the guard. Otherwise, I'm arrested and I cannot perform my robbing. Okay, and I will try to give you on very small attack tree, attack defense tree, sorry, the intuition of what we can do with that. So if I take the propositional set with only one proposition, I'll denote true, the classical formula P or not P, and I can do true send true, and that will denote all the traces of lengths bigger than two. And then if I make true countermeasure, true, send true, we have the complements, which are all the traces which lengths are strictly smaller than two. And this example, even if not really exciting, is of interest because as the language of this tree, I mean, the semantic of this attack defense tree is finite, it cannot be expressed by any attack tree. So those very small examples show that adding one counter is 
already at expressivity. So let's do more stuff and say let's imbricate the countermeasure. And in this example, my toy example, I say that the attackers say, okay, they are your regards. My countermeasure is that I will disguise as a plumber in such a way that I can enter the building because they wouldn't recognize me as a robot. And in a more formal way, I, I give you an example here that show that we can encode the intersection of two um, attack trees. So if we have tau one and tau two, two attack tree, you can be convinced that this attack defense tree with two countermeasure encodes the intersection. Okay. So our goal was to solve the non-emptiness problem. Our first hope was a p-space or an x-time algorithm. And our desired tool was to go further with this small model property. Okay, we get preliminary results by first focusing on what we've called ADT1, saying we look only at attack defense tree with one counter imbrication. We get a similar kind of small model property, saying if there is a trace, there is a small one. And we get membership P, non-emptiness and P complete. Equivalence is not clear for the moment. Decidable, yes. Uh, not clear is, I'm not sure anymore if we are something like between 3x time and 7x time or something like that. It's, it's not tight at all, <laughs> but decidable. So we made many attempts until, and I remember this meeting, that was one time uh, Alexandre was not there, I was alone with Sophie, and we were, were keeping trying hard to get these this small traces. And at some point, Sophie told me, but Alexandre really tried hard and he didn't succeed. Maybe just he doesn't exist. And then we, we change our mind. And I think we discover uh, th this theorem that maybe was already clear to many of you, including Paul, because you are so aware of that, is that in fact, attack defense three, they are the same as star free languages. And then I've tried, we've tried to, to read and we found this very nice survey paper where I start to learn stuff that I should have known for a long time, but I've discovered during this thing that in fact, if you have a language, the following one are, are equivalent. Either it's definable in first order logic, either it's an extended star free regular expression, either is minimal automaton is cycle free, either it is uh, definable with LTL or either the language is a period. And the main, the, the way we present the language is crucial on the complexity of the emptiness problem because it's given as an automaton, it's easy, it's n log space. If it's given for LTL, it's not so bad, it's P space. But when it's given as first order, as, as a star-free expression, it's completely terrible. It's non-elementary. And so we've tried to, to, to recover the best we can. And what we've obtained is that due to the, our representation of our attack trees quite close of first order and quite close for star-free, which means that even if the membership is P, non-emptiness and equivalence are both non-elementary. And so we wanted to get finer result and try to mimic what is done in first order and what is done in a star-free language, but with a, a measure that was really close to what we were doing, namely what we've called the counter depth. So it's defined there for a leaf, we say the counter depth is zero. If you take a or, a and, or a send, you just make the max of the subtree, but if you make a counter operator, you put plus one comp regarding what's happening on the right. And so we denote ADTK, the tree of counter depth smaller than K, and clearly by definition, we have this inclusion. So examples for ADT zero is the one there. This example is a, 
attack defense tree, which is not in a DT zero for the reason I give you before, its language is finite. But if I give you something like that for TO1 and T2, which clear it's in IDT2, if naming that both are in IDT0, but is there in IDT1? We don't know. And we realized that those questions were related to many difficult questions that several of you have already investigated. And though we go back to the very nice survey uh, I've mentioned before, and I discovered that um, Paul and Volker, they share a, a patient with me, which is the work of Wolfgang Thomas. And I, I, I cite a, a phrase in the sentence of the paper that the investigation on first order languages has been continuous interest over the past decade, and many important results are related to the effort of Wolfgang Thomas. And so we start digging at the source, and we go back to the paper of Wolfgang. And in, so I told before that the complexity measure in FO and in a context-free language are different to the one we consider. For in FO, I would say the more known one, which is we, we count the number of alternates of block of quantifiers. And for extended star-free, there are, from what I've read, several variants of what's called the dot depth hierarchy. And we count the number of times we use a dot between the Boolean combination. And Wolfgang shown in 82 that, in fact, both hierarchies, I would say, nearly coincide because you need a Boolean on one side. And he provides a very nice family of example, which Ln, such that S Ln is in n plus 1 and not in n. And I could not resist to show you the papers of Wolfgang because I was completely fascinated by how clear it was, although, you know, it was not LaTeX type, but it was at the end with those old machines done. And so here he, he expressed those languages that will be the one to, to differentiate the different le level of the hierarchies. And what's the idea? It's a Two, we took a, an alphabet with two letters, A and B, and for a given word, you, you denote its weight, which is the number of A minus the number of B. And then you look at the language of interest, will be, we want at the end of the words that the, the weight is zero, so we have the same number of A and of B. All the prefix have a weight at most K, but at some point we reach K. And Wolfgang say, okay, it's not that easy, but I will give you pictures. So I cannot imagine how long it, it should have taken him to, to do this kind of stuff. Say so we, we denote by this increasing, uh, I mean, bar and this decreasing bar. So this is a, a, this is a B, and this is the moral picture of how the language should behave. So, you know, the number of bay will increase, it reach k, then can reach it again, and at the end, it should be zero. And he needed also two complementary languages, which are lk plus and lk minus, whose intuition is described in those two pictures. So once we were equipped with that, so Wolfgang managed to describe the, the two language. This is the beginning of the proof and the technicality to show that it's really where it claims that it, it is. And the key ingredient to prove that the language is at the level k, not the language k plus minus one, is some kind of Ehrenfeld Preise k. And he needs to find long witnesses which cannot be distinguished by the game of the, the corresponding length, but such that one is in the language and the other one is not. And he keep giving us the intuition by saying, okay, this for the number one is a b to the power two of the n, and how he construct the following words, and he give pictures to get the intuition of how does they behave. Okay, so just for those who were not familiar for uh, the Ehrenfeld Preise game, I just put a, a few slides to give you a, an idea of what it is. 
But what the slide here is for the original Ehrenfeld Tricer game, the one that Wolfgang Hughes in his paper is a bit more sophisticated. So in the original one, we count not the number of alternation, but the number of quantifi quantifiers. So the quantifier rank of a formula is zero when it's quantifier. It doesn't change when you fit negation, disjunction, conjunction. And it's plus one when you add an existence shell or universal one. And you say that two words model are equivalent if they satisfy the same first order formula of quantifier rank at most k, and then you say they are k equivalent. And associated to that, there is a game, and there is the spoiler and duplicator, and it's a k-round game, and each step duplicator picks either in the world w1 or w2, some position, and spoiler pick in a position in the other words, and duplicator wins if the two sequences provide a partial isomorphism. What is partial isomorphism? You just say, we have to satisfy the same predicate. And the theorem is that the words are K equivalent if and only if duplicator has a winning strategy in the Ehrenfeld tries case. So just a very simple example. If I took those two words, A, A, B, 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 and A, 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 B, B. First one, he pick A. Then he pick A again, so clearly those are, those are equivalent. Then pick A, pick A again, it's okay. But at step three, when he picks the third A, it's impossible to get a corresponding A. So at level three, those formula are not equivalent. Okay, so back to our hierarchy. What we've managed to, to prove so far is that our hierarchy is strict and we have a not so bad, so we prove that additive k is in sigma k plus two, and that LK is in additive two k. Based on that, we managed to prove the strictness, and we had a quite good understanding at the very beginning of the hierarchy. And just on Tuesday, Alexandre came. It was uh, in Rennes with Sophie for one week, and they came with two. I would say ongoing hopes that we get another inclusion and he get a tighter understanding of where the language would be in the hierarchy. Okay. And so our open question is that how does our hierarchy really behave compared to the classical ones? We were wondering whether we can find a uh, Ehrenfeld Rice again directly for attack defense tree. And we'd like to know if there are any hardness results for the non empty nest problem to or attack defense tree of level k. Okay. Now I will go on my second part, which is let's change the semantics. So we come back to attack tree. Okay, so there is no discounter operator anymore. And what we do is that we will transfer the transition system into a game arena. And we will focus on my toy example, but really at the beginning and just focusing at the place where the rubber want to enter the building. Okay, if we do that, this part of the transition system, oh, sorry, first we focus on this part of the attack tree and the transition system, we model it as a concurrent game. So imagine the, the guards can be either in front So sorry. The first component is for the rubber. The second is for the guard. The guard can be either at one door or it can be moving or it could be at the window. And the rubber could be either at one door, so outside far away or at a window. And what, so I'll just recall you what I told you before, transition system become game arena, traces become strategy, finite words become finite tree, and the semantic of a leaf that I gave you before, they become the winning strategy for the rubber for reaching the objective five. And very quickly, we realize that composition is problematic. So. Imagine we are here in this initial state. Clearly, 
the rubber has no strategy to say, I want to go to the door, because if the guard go to the door and never leave the door, he will not enter the door. It, the rubber, so the semantic for, I don't want to be seen and want to go to the door is empty. The same way the semantic for, I don't want to be arrested and go to the end, to the window is empty. But the semantic saying, okay, I want to enter the building, either through the door or the windows is not empty because he's just waiting to see where is the guard going and then take the other entrance. So we, we did not manage to make a compositional strategy at the level of the tree, but we do it by going through the words again by saying that the strategy for, of a tree is will be denoted this way and every branch should be in the, strat in the word semantic of the attack tree. Okay, there we recover what I would say more reasonable complexity results. So membership is co and p complete and non-emptiness and equivalence are p space complete. Okay, so that's, I'm reaching the conclusion of the talk. So in conclusion, attack different tree is a subject of practical interest, which in surprising way reveals really great theoretical challenge and if you want to learn more as i told you at the beginning let's go and see sophie tutorials and i thank you very much for your attention long live india and france friendship <laughs>